Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I figured that, or at least good morning for me, I have my have my cup of coffee. I'm going to do some pollination of some pinks today. And I figured so many people on my Instagram always ask me how I do it. Um, so I might as well, uh, might as well thought I made it, would make a video to kind of show them how I do it. Um, I will, I want to, I won't lie. A lot of what I am going to say today is a repeat of um, what I previously heard uh, in one of Bob Beer's video. I can maybe link that in the video description. Um, he made a great video on pollinating pings, and that's kind of how I learned. In addition to maybe like reading some forum posts and stuff, but the first thing that you'll need is well, for one, um, a ping that flowers. So I got a few here. I'm gonna make some ignata hybrids and maybe some I also have a Martens and I here uh, you can't see it it's right here maybe here maybe you can see here I have a Martens and I I'm gonna make some hybrids of maybe so these are all kind of related species maybe you can tell by some of the flower morphology that they're all sort of taxonomically grouped together and secondly you'll need something to pollinate things with I'm a really big fan of these toothpicks. And what I do is I just take a Sharpie and I just cover the tip black like that. And this is just because like the flowers are so small and the pollen and the anthers are so small, it's really hard to see the pollen. So the black on the Sharpie will help you see the pollen better. So I usually just let that dry for a bit just so that the um, the Sharpie ink doesn't, you know, damage any of the pollen. Um, but first, I think we should get into some flower morphology of pinks. And of course, I don't have my scissors or tweezers or whatever. So let's grab... This one's good. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we can get away with using one of these ones. Don't worry, this flower's on the end of its life anyway, so this isn't harming anything. This is a flower on, um, I'm sorry for the sway. Uh, this is actually, my phone's on my grow lights, so it's a bit wobbly. I'm hoping this doesn't give you guys like too much motion sickness. Um, I don't really have a fantastic setup, but th this is a pretty spent flower. This one is a Moctezume, or sorry, Gypsy Cola by Moctezume. And you can see a few different parts here, right? So this long bit right here, you have the nectar spur, and that's where the actual hummingbird will go in and put their beak to get the nectar. And then you actually have uh, the petioles, or the petals right here. I guess the petioles would be back here but they're not too important. Um, and then you can see here that there is the corolla, or this is the petals of the corolla and the, the throat of the corolla Ooh, right there. <clears throat> so with a lot of, once you get kind of used to it, you can kind of take your toothpick and you can actually go in there, Ooh. go in there and just scoop pollen out. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how you would do it if you're just doing this for the first time because um, the flower anatomy is not intuitive, right? But the nice thing about pings is, I mean, I'm sorry um, that you have to do this to your pings to do this for the first few times, but you got to grab the three bottom petals of the Corolla and grab the top two petals and you just pull. And it's going to come apart right like that. And you're going to toss the top two petals or top three. And here you get an exposure of the actual flower anatomy right here. So I'm gonna grab my toothpick again. And I don't know if you can see here, but there's these little white things. These are the anthers, which is the male part of the flower. And here is the stigma or the female part of the flower. So the stigma is this little flap and if you lift up the flap, that's often where the pollen is. You can see that yellow bit right there. So what you'll usually do, 
this flower is um, infertile. There is no pollen on here. The pollen doesn't come off. Um, well, I guess a little bit comes off, but not too much. Um, I've never really bothered with hybrids with this one. It's not very great. Ooh, I'm off screen again. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but you would go like this. You'd scoop some pollen. I don't know if you can see. There's like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit amount there. Yeah, you can see there's a few little flakes. And then you go onto another flower and you would gently put it on the stigma of that flower. And that's how you pollinate it. And then make sure that you record what you did, right? I usually do it in a spreadsheet. If a ping has two or more flowers, I will often take a piece of twine and I'll tie it on the flowers. I'll show you when I get to that with the Signata red leaf. Um, and then also, you can use the other end of the toothpick too, but then immediately after I break it and I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna use this anymore because I don't want to cross pollinate and I don't wanna make hybrids of something that I don't know what the heck it is. Okay, cool. So let's get on to actually doing this. Um, you might not be able to see everything I'm doing, but I'll try to talk as I'm doing it. The th unfortunate thing about these um, pings in this uh, Ibarre Agnata Martensini Gigantea complex is that the actual stigma is um, actually deep, deep, deep within the corolla. So you do have to completely destroy the flower. I don't know if you can see here, but it's way back here, right? You can see where the petioles are on the back of there. So the, the stigma is not until back there. So it's really hard to reach in there um, and actually do it. All right, so let's uh, let's play hummingbird. Make some make some pollination. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do I want a pure ignata cross. I ignata is one of my favorite species, um, hence why I did a pinguicula of the month on it. Ooh, this looks not right. <laughs> well, we'll go for it anyways, right? We'll see. Maybe this one looks better. Mm, Ignata red leaf looks like there's no pollen in there. We'll rip this one apart too. Hopefully we'll get something. Um, but sometimes this is kind of the uh, annoying thing about making these hybrids is that sometimes there's just no pollen in there and there's nothing you can really do about it. But we can, we can still try. So in the case of this, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to try to get this on screen. I also don't want to damage the flowers and try to get some pollen. And you want to be really careful because you don't want to damage the stigma. And there's a bit there. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of pollen. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of white pollen there. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to put that here. And then usually go, I go back a few times because I really want to make sure that I have something on here. So I'll go back, I'll scoop some more, gently put it back. Just kind of lightly dab it on, grab some more. And that's probably, that's probably all I'm gonna get for that one. I'm gonna go back to Ignata Red Leaf and I'm gonna grab the pollen from it. This guy, actually, this guy has a little bit more pollen. Let's see there. I've noticed some pings are like prolific pollen producers. Um, I have a uh, hemiepiphytica here that I pollinated. Um, I'm not sure what, damn, I'm not sure what end I, I used. Um, I have Hemiopithetica that produces like an insane amount of pollen. And I'll show it in a second before I get distracted and I forget what it is. Oh, there we go. That's a, that's a great amount of pollen. If you get that, you're rocking and rolling because usually you don't get that much. So we'll do that. So we got Ignata Red by Ignata. And I'm trying to think about what else I want to do.
I think I want to do an Ignata Red by Martens and I. <clears throat> I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of twine. And I'm going to write this down in my spreadsheet that the one with twine is Martens and I. So I'm just going to do this. Some people put tags. Um, some people mark flowers differently. I like doing this because it's very non-harmful to the flower at all. I just loosely tie it like that. And then we're good to go. So let's do, let's do, uh, unfortunately, got a, sorry, Martens and I. Oh, right, I was going to show you how many fit got. Absolutely scattered brain today. <clears throat> and this is nice too because you guys can actually see um, what a successful pollination looks like. So in this case, this is my Hemiophytica. There's a new flower coming out. I think I'm going to cross that with this Emerginata right here, this Emerginata red. I was going to maybe pollinate that with something, but I think I'm just going to uh, save that flower for Hemiophytica. And you can see, this is what a successful pollination looks like. You can see that this the ovary now of this ping is super swollen. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's focusing or not. But that's what it looks like. And then when that's open, I don't have any examples at the moment, but it will dry up and crack open. And that is when you harvest the seeds. Although the thing is, is you always got to hold your breath until seed harvesting day because the ovaries do swell like that. And uh, believe it or not, uh, they don't always have seeds inside, which is a really frustrating thing about pollinating pings. Is that... You can wait two months for a uh, ovary to ripen, and there's just nothing in there. What did I say? I said uh, Ignata by Martens and I, and I'll do the reverse cross. So I'll rip that flower open, and uh, grab some pollen. Oh yeah, that's a that's a that's a great. This this thing not a red leaf actually has a decent amount of pollen, which is nice. Now let's just hope it's fertile, because <laughs> that's not always the case. Okay, I think that's enough for more tens and I. And then let's grab some from more tens and I. Put it on a dot of red leaf. This Martens and I has a lot of pollen. I think I'm gonna cross this one with a bari. I think that might be cute. Almost need like a uh, watchmaker's glasses. It's so tiny. Okay. All right, last flower for today. We're gonna do this nice abare that I got from Bug Eater Gardens. It's really cute. Nice relative of Inanna. I'm gonna cross this with Martens and I. Sorry, flower, you gotta go. what I was doing again, so I'll throw out that toothpick. Grab some pollen. Put it on there. Actually you know what? I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this abare by Emerginata. Since uh I think that Emerginata is making another flower. So we'll do that. Okay, and then, oh, what the hell, I'll do Emerginata by Esriana.
I actually haven't gotten a successful seed pod from Esriana yet. But I guess there's a first time for everything, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I bumped you guys. I'm gonna be seasick now. Maybe I should buy a tripod. Maybe I shouldn't. I haven't broke. <laughs> it's fine. And I'll just quickly take the pollen from this Esriana. Ooh, wait. Oops. Oh man, there's no pollen from this. Merging out of red. Okay, well. That's that. Anyways, I think I butchered the stigma of that emerging on a red. Whoops. Okay. And now, <clears throat> the joy of writing this all down in a spreadsheet. Anyways, uh, I hope that was helpful for everybody. Um, have fun. Have fun playing hummingbird and making some ping babies. Um, maybe I'll make a video on, um, sowing seeds and, uh, harvesting and all that. I'll make a video on harvesting when it comes to time. All right. See ya. Have a great day.